Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Thanks, Jim. Hey, everybody, and thanks again for plugging into TTI's Distribution Download. I'm Steve Brohoski. I'm a Connector Business Development Manager at TTI. I've been in the electronics industry for over 30 years, four of which have been here at TTI, working with primarily connector suppliers. And in this episode, we're welcoming Nazario Biala, who is a key account manager for Harding. And today's topic is going to be enabling industry 4.0. So before we jump into the subject matter, Nazario, would you mind introducing yourself to the audience and sharing a little bit about your experience? Yeah, sure can, Steve. First of all, thanks for, uh, for having me. Pleasure to be here. So a little bit about myself. So uh, I'm an electrical engineer by education and uh, I've been in this wonderful automation industry for, I would say, a good chunk of my career over the past 20 years or so, having served various roles, whether it be as uh, an application engineer, uh, various uh, leadership roles in product management, business development, as well as uh, market development. Um, recently, uh, with Harding, I've been with Harding for, gosh, uh, almost five years, having done industry segment manager role for the past four and a half years, primarily focused on the automation segment, and recently uh, uh, have this new opportunity as a key account manager for the same, basically the same uh, segment. We really appreciate you taking some time to sit with us today and share a little bit of your knowledge on Industry 4.0. And so why don't we just jump right into it. Can you maybe briefly explain for the audience what Industry 4.0 means? Yeah, so Industry 4.0. Well, first coin is Industry 4.0 in 2011. It is uh, commonly referred to as the fourth industrial revolution, right? And really, when you look at Industry 4.0, it paved the way for digital transformation transformation and uh, opened up various exciting new opportunities for industrial automation and manufacturing. Uh, with Industry 4.0, it's really all about connecting equipment and systems to better share and analyze data to enable manufacturing to, to realize various benefits such as higher throughput, better manufacturing efficiency, better product quality and optimized overall equipment Efficiency, just to name a few. So, you know, Industry 4.0, as you mentioned, has been around a while. Would you mind sharing for the audience's benefit, and I guess for mine as a refresher, what were Industry 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0? Can you take us through the evolution? So, with Industry 1.0, it's considered the first industrial revolution, which began in the latter half of the 18th century, and really transformed largely rural farming societies in Europe and America into industrialized and urban societies. Goods that had once been produced by hands can now be produced in mass quantities by machines powered by, by steam and water. Then the uh, second industrial revolution took place in the 1870s and introduced to our society electricity, steel, and assembly line, and further improved mass production. And then in the 1970s, the third industrial revolution began and introduced electronics, automation, and computers that required data analytics and processing, which I guess was the introduction of Industry 4.0 to a certain extent. Yeah, it's interesting when you look back through time, you could these, these placeholders, these milestones in this particular in, uh, industry as an example of industrial, industrial automation the introduction of the computer, the, inter- the introduction of networks within the within the uh, factory uh, automation platform. It's, uh, it's fascinating. And really what we want to spend some time on today is how connectivity plays a, a role in that. So another commonly used term these days and has been for a number of years is the Internet of Things, and more specifically in this case, the industrial Internet of Things. And mm-hmm. that coupled with uh, Industry 4.0, uh, how would you say that's impacted automation devices and and how they have been translated to connectivity solutions that are required today? Uh, that, that's a great question, Steve. And, and as we talked about in this brief for that, oh, it's all about focus on big data analytics, right? So when you look at industry 4.0, industry 4.0, for that same, for that very reason of big data analytics, will require modern manufacturing facilities to, to generate and collect more data for machine learning, AI, and predictive maintenance. So it stands to reason that more automation devices will need to be installed to, to, gel- to generate and collect more tangible data. 
And, and this is where it gets really interesting because from the standpoint of plant managers, capital improvements today are not so much in expanding their, their plant size. Their KPIs is, is more or less based on squeezing as much production as humanly possible from their existing capacity and equipment. So what this means is that the footprint of the machines and manufacturing facilities are standing pat. They're not getting any bigger. And, and because the footprint of the machines and the facilities are, are, again, standing pat, well, that means that the automation devices themselves will need to get smaller so that more of them can be installed in different parts of manufacturing facilities to, to generate and collect more tangible data. And with space being a premium, these small, smaller automation devices of today are now installed in adverse areas that engineers in the past would not consider installing them. Because of that, automation devices now need to, to be more robust to, to handle these harsh environments. Uh, when you talk about harsh environments, we're talking about high shock and vibration, as well as corrosion, just to name, uh, you know, give you a couple of examples. But here's the kicker, Steve. Just because the devices are getting smaller doesn't necessarily mean that they'll have less functionalities. On the contrary, they're actually being asked to do more. And when you look at all these new automation devices, I'll give you an example in terms of maybe some of the new functionalities that will be required. Automation devices, as an example, will be required to have higher data rate capability to support the increasingly higher demands of the processing speed of field data in, in applications such as edge computing, which we all know is uh, playing a, a more um, more role, important role as far as supporting decentralized designs within manufacturing facilities. Uh, so with that being said, these field data processing speed now requires speeds upwards of gigabit to 10 gigabit transmission speeds. And so when you look at all of those things, they all tie in as far as what's required for automation devices and also extending to what's required for the connectivity solutions to, to support the requirements of, of today's automation devices. Okay, cool. When you say automation devices, I think of things like motion control, vision systems, obviously sensors that are capturing data. Uh, programmable logic controllers, robotics, all of that goes into the category of automation devices. So all of those things are connected in a factory floor, which is what you're describing as the network that has to support all that and all that data that has to move around a, a factory floor. Is that is that correct? Exactly. Especially the field device levels. And you, you touched on it, uh, Steve, again, whether it be the limit switches, the photo, photo eyes, prox sensors, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Those will play a very critical role in terms of, of generating and collecting all those tangible data that's required for industry for that all. So some of the functionalities you're describing, Nazario, in include a greater use of Ethernet ports, uh, which is becoming a, ha having a bigger impact on design considerations. And how would you say this change has affected the connectivity requirements overall? No, again, great question. So the requirements brought on by the increased use of Ethernet ports to support Industry 4.0, and this, uh, this is what we're talking about, really has had a huge effect on the connectors required to support Ethernet. And, and to illustrate that, let, let's look at the RJ45, right? So to, to illustrate the much needed change. RJ45, as we all know, has long been considered the de facto connector to, to support Ethernet and it's, the, uh, it's, it's commonly known as the most widely used connector in the world. But let's face it, when we look at RJ45, RJ45 was originally designed for office environment and never intended for the rough and tumble environment of the industrial automation. Mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a plastic latch that can break pretty easily. Exactly. Right? You, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just kind of funny how this connector has lived for um, decades in an environment that it was not per, it was not uh, intended for. But because it, it, of its ubiquitous use, people just got used to it. Mm -hmm. But to your point, when you look at the RJ45, it lacks robustness. Uh, you know, uh, case in point, and I think you mentioned it, 
the uh, broken locking tabs and occasional contact problems, right? And because of that, <laughs> a lot of users have this have this uh, love hate relationship with the RJ45. And when when you factor in the the increased requirement for smaller automation devices, well, the size of the RJ45 puts a limit on the miniaturization possibility, which is one of the key requirements to support Industry 4.0. So given that, the industry is, is really ripe for a new connectivity solution that is robust and is specifically designed for the industrial automation environment and can also support the high data requirement of Industry 4.0 and lastly, support miniaturization, which we, which we uh, touched on. And as we look at the connectivity market landscape today, we are starting to see solutions such as the IX industrial connector that you uh, referred to that addresses the challenges that the industry has faced with the RJ45 for years. So Steve, let's talk about the IX industrial connector. It's 75% uh, smaller than the RJ45 and can support CAT 6A performance for, for 10 gigabits uh, per second ethernet, right? So it's, it's fully shielded and is tested to withstand railway standard shock and vibration requirement and support up to 5,000 mating cycles. So we're, we're, really, we're really talking about a fairly small and robust connector that can support the high data rate requirement of Industry 4.0, but more importantly, it's specifically designed for the industrial uh, in, uh, automation environment. And as we look at the market environment today, we are starting to see increased usage of the IX industrial connector in, in various automation devices, such as vision cameras, control modules, and servo drives. Very cool. So when I think of the IX industrial, I, I know that it's, it's uh, surrounded by a standards body, just like the RJ11, because there's an Ethernet protocol that has to be adhered to. So as the standard body continues to uh, support the IX Industrial and perhaps other extensions of it in the future and or associated Ethernet type connectors. I assume Harding is well entrenched with the standards committees that, that uh, design or that help uh, spec out what these uh, connectors need to look like and adhere to? Exactly correct uh, there, Steve. So as an organization, we make it our mission to make sure that we're front and center in terms of, 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 of being part of, of th those discussions as far as identifying what are the new requirements to support the new technologies of tomorrow, whether it be Industry 4.0 or in this case 5.0, which we're starting to hear more and more of. So we are part of uh, standard organizations such as ODVA here in North America and in the European communities, we're part of IEC, IEEE and so forth. Nice. It makes perfect sense because in the short time of our relationship, I've, I've certainly uh, come to know Harding as an innovator, uh, being on the leading edge of connector design and making sure that you are anticipating the, the needs, in this case, of the industrial automation factory floor environment and are part of the solution set in terms of connectivity needed to, uh, to take the the industry to the next to the next level. You you touched on industry 5.0. It's it's something that's becoming more and more discussed. Uh, although a lot of people maybe haven't heard of it that are listening today. Can you share with us what your understanding of industry 5.0 is? It's it's crazy, right? See, because we're just starting to scratch the surface in, on on industry 4.0. But here we are. We're now starting to talk about industry 5.0. But that's just the way our, our uh, business is, right? We're constantly looking forward. So when you look at Industry 5.0, Industry 5.0 is also known as, I guess, the fifth industrial revolution and is considered the new and emerging phase of industrialization that, that's really based on humans working alongside advanced technology and AI-powered robots to to really enhance the workplace processes, right? And when you look at Industry 5.0, this is coupled with a more human-centric focus as well as increased resilience and improved focus on sustainability. And there's another buzzword that, that, that's commonly being used, but sustainability is, is huge uh, initiatives for a lot of the companies. And so that's what Industry 5.0 is also, will be looking to address going forward but going back to Industry 5.0, it, it, it encompasses more than just manufacturing. 
this new phase builds upon the industry forward out on is and, and really is enabled by developments in IT that includes various facets such as artificial intelligence, automation, big data analytics, IOT, machine learning, robotic smart systems, as well as virtualization, digital twins, you know. Wow. Now you're scaring me a little bit. <laughs> human, human machine interface, cobots, right? So there's <laughs> there's a proliferation of the use of sensors in, the, in that environment. When there's sensors capturing data, that data has to be moved through connectors that we're describing here. And so uh, you, you're right. You know, the first three evolutions of the industrial workplace were took decades. <laughs> and now we're like within a decade and we're already talking about the, the next generation and the impact that it'll have on connectivity, which is you know sometimes overlooked or misunderstood. Um, and so it requires people like Harding that provides solutions uh, that, that can anticipate the needs and or respond to the needs of the industry as it evolves. And so I'm really excited to see what, what the future holds with respect to industry 5.0 in terms of connectivity. I'm certain some of, of the existing products will be used, but there probably will be product evolution and, and product development that'll come from, from the evolution of this uh, very important part of our, of our uh, industry segment. So really cool. Uh, thanks again, Nazario, for joining me today and, and sharing your knowledge and your insight on industry 4.0 with the audience today. We look forward to future episodes with Harding on emerging markets that will help shape connector development and usage in the years to come. And I also would like to thank the listeners for plugging in with us today and encourage you to tune in again for our next distribution download. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.